Okay, yeah, I'm a former Seventh Day Adventist uh, mm-hmm. elder in a wow. Seventh Day Adventist um, home fellowship. So I used to be an evangelist for them. Um, wow. Yeah, and then I started questioning some of the writings of Alan White, and I finally stepped down from the fellowship that I was a uh, elder in. Wow. And then uh, we started a ministry out here called Seventh Day Anabaptist because I had always been kind of interested in the Anabaptists, and uh, I discovered that some of them were Sabbath keepers. Mm-hmm. So um, we started a ministry out here. Uh, this is basically a small little ministry. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, so that was about a year ago that I stepped down from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I was a full-time minister. First, let me tell you that Bakayaki disagreed with the Seventh-day Adventists when they said that the weekly Sabbath is not mentioned in Colossians 2. You see why they said that? Because right. they could say this, they could see this is a shadow. It's nothing. So it cannot be mentioned in Colossians 2. And Bakio said that's not right. Well, and I, actually, I actually agree with you and Bakayaki on that. Good. So my understanding... Yeah, my understanding is that it is talking about the weekly Sabbath, yes, the, the new moons and the feast days. Good. But the way I understand it, when you read the, the chapter in context, especially towards the end, yeah. it looks like Paul is saying that, you know, let no one judge you mm-hmm. in respect to these like man-made traditions and mm-hmm. doctrines of men that he mentions in verse 22 of Colossians 2. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that we're not, the, the body of Messiah is not to let anybody judge them in how they keep these Ooh. days. And obviously, okay. yeah. in the new you're in the new covenant, there would be a, a different sense in how they keep these days because now we're not going to do animal sacrifices. We don't have a, a temple to go to or a, a physical priesthood that we offer sacrifices that's our, that are going to offer these sacrifices on our behalf. Right. But no, that's the clear. reason why I have to understand it like this is because mm-hmm. Paul, we know he keeps the Sabbath. He even keeps the feast. So it, it would make him look a little bit hypocritical if he's saying don't keep these things. Yes. Well, I I honestly disagree with you on that. First of all, the single shadow is all three, and it's all a shadow. The shadow is a shadow, negatively contrasted through this thing about let the church of God judge you. Let me tell you from a language point of view, that is frightfully strange. It doesn't say let nobody judge you, but except the church of God should judge you. That doesn't work. Language-wise, it's very, very awkward. I would rather take that at face value. These are shadows. Your Sabbath-keeping is fine, but you're still observing shadow. Forget it. Move into Christ. And even the holy days, which you didn't keep, that's strange. Why not? Why select one of the three? Ellen G. White, I would say. Yeah, well, now my understanding is I I do try to keep the feast, so I do believe in them. Now, as far as the Sabbath goes... We, we, and I believe you believe this, that this was sanctified at the seventh day of creation before, you know, sin came into the world, before yeah. there was even the nation of Israel. So it was blessed on, you know, the seventh day before any of these things came about. So um, it seems like if we're going to take away that commandment out of the ten, that's kind of arbitrary, just stripping the fourth commandment. Yes, I understand what you're saying, but let me answer you there. The whole of the ten commandments are gone in the letter. The distinction is the law of Messiah as distinct from the law of Moses. So calling it the Ten Commandments means nothing because Second Corinthians 3 says that that episode written in stones is finished. The glory of Moses, forget it. So I don't know why one would kick the Sabbath unless you keep the holy days and the new moons. Are you keeping the new moons? Yeah, actually, uh, on the new moons, we do communion. Okay. That's our communion day. Okay. Uh, um, but... Yeah. yeah, the law now is written on our heart, but I would yeah. think, like, I use the analogy like this. So if I have a daughter yeah. uh, and, and I give her a list of rules on paper and I post them on her, her door, mm-hmm. um, and then I one day I just tell her, I said, listen, um, I'm going to take these down. Mm-hmm. I just want you to have them in your heart. Now yeah. that, to me, I'm still, of course, expecting her that she's actually, it's actually going to be more dear to her now. She's yes. going to keep them even more. Okay. She's going to keep them in the spirit. Yeah. Rather than to just be a, a list of rules and do's and don'ts. So I've got that. I understand the law now, the Ten Commandments to be written on our heart, mm-hmm. the tables of our flesh. Um, or, I don't That's see right. that mean being that them being done away with. Now they're more binding, but in a, but now we God wants us to keep these with the yep. spiritual understanding of what these days mean, what these laws and commandments mean, than just rather keeping them by the okay. letter as some obligatory. So custom. let me ask you this question then: If your job requires you to work during the Feast of Tabernacles. Are you going to lose your job for that? 
Well, um, because like, for example, Tabernacles is coming up, I'm planning to take the two Sabbath days off. Yeah. I'm not planning to go anywhere to keep it because I right now don't have a fellowship to go and keep it with since I'm not an Adventist anymore. Because the Adventist church I was part of, yeah. we were keeping the holy days. We were an independent Adventist church. Okay, I got it. But so I wouldn't mind working actually during the days that are not Sabbath days within that feast. I'm open to that. But you're strictly, well, yes. Okay. It's, it's kind of a little bit light, L-I-T-E, right? You're not that tough that you are, you are not doing what it says. Go to a central location, right? Because that's not possible for you. Right. So that's why for me, I'm not dogmatic no. with people on the, that's why I believe what Paul's addressing in Colossians 2 mm. is don't let these people that are getting to all these outward uh, you know, mm. these, these, these food type of uh, yeah. sanctification things and these yeah. extra doctrines and commandments, men that are not biblical. Don't let people put these things on you. Right. So I do believe that in Sabbath keeping, and I even tell people that, you know, um, you let God guide you and how you're going to keep your Sabbath. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm not here to judge people on how they keep it. Um, but yeah. I think in the new covenant, obviously, there's things that we can't do that were old covenant specific, you know, the, the temple, the priesthood. No, you obviously cannot do that, but you are right. not to work on the Sabbath according to the law. Ten right, and I don't. I don't. Okay, I meet Sabbath keepers who say, look, that's fine as long as it doesn't interfere with my job. That's a bit strange. That's not Sabbath keeping. So yeah, there's my, a lot of mess here. My suggestion to you is that the whole calendar is gone. It's a single shadow. I would urge you to look at the Greek, get some good Greek experts on side and look at some commentaries to say that don't let anybody judge you on this, but do let the Church of God judge you. That is very bungled as far as language is concerned. I suggest that doesn't work. That was an Armstrong thing, by the way. Well, the, the problem we have, though, is that Paul kept the Sabbath. It was his custom Did on he? the Sabbath to pray and to preach. And... Uh, we go, you know, this is outside of the Bible, but you go to early church history. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until the, you know, we have the church father's account of Sunday being the Lord's day, but then we don't really want to go by them because they had some other false doctrines. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah, I don't think Paul kept the Sabbath. I don't think Paul can say, look, the Sabbath is a shadow. Forget it. Move on to Jesus and then l legally keep it. I, I don't think that makes sense. He would certainly go where the Jews were. We've been through all these arguments. You know them only too well. Well, the, the new heaven and new earth were keeping the Sabbath. So why would it be done away uh, now if we're keeping it in the new heaven and new earth? God sacrifices also in the future. So why don't you, shouldn't you do that now? I don't think that works either. I'm talking of 50, 60 years now. I can be wrong. When we right. gave up Sabbath keeping, we became free. Well, we yeah. And that's not us for that. I don't observe the Sabbath. I'll work on the Sabbath. I'm shopping, whatever. I just don't think that Colossians 2.16 can stand it. I've got this book by Canfield, a Sabbatarian SDA, who read, said, I gave up Sabbath keeping after 28 years. I'm a language person. I only, from my limited understanding, Paul could not have written Colossians 2.16 to mean sabbath keeping or new moons is binding it anyway that's well, I yeah i don't necessarily think these feast days are binding because obviously uh part of that was going to jerusalem yes. on three of the three of the feast days yes. I, I guess what i'm saying is is that he's telling them you know don't let nobody judge you and how you keep them because even within a seventh day adventist church you'll have some adventists that will judge other adventists and yes. how they keep the sabbath yes. so that's what i think he's addressing is the legalist yes those that are going beyond what the Bible says and how to keep it. I get it. Um, but it I understand. It. But I Paul didn't actually say that. Great he didn't say, don't let anybody judge you on how you keep it. Didn't say that. Don't let anybody judge you in regard to the three, which are a shadow. Why do I need a shadow, for goodness sake? Well, um, one thing I want I wanted to see what you think about this yeah. verse in Revelation 11, yeah. 16 through 19, in context of the the seventh trumpet and the kingdoms of this earth becoming yes. the kingdoms of, of, of Jehovah and of yes. his Christ. Wonderful. We see in Revelation in verse 19 where the temple in heaven is opened and you see yes. the Ark of the Covenant. Yes. Showing us that there seems to be, and this is in context of the judgment of the, 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 those who are destroying the earth and the reward of the, the servants yes. of God. Yes. And you see the Ark of the Covenant open. Yes. That's like the Ten Commandments right there. That's the Ten Commandments. I mean, the, the Ark of the Covenant. In the letter, when Second Corinthians 3 has told me that those are gone. In the letter. I suggest this distinction. You should keep all the law you can in the spirit. So please, would you define for me, what's the difference between the Torah of Messiah and the Torah of Moses? What is the difference? 
Well, what I see in going to the book of Hebrews, I think is good for understanding that because yeah. it, it seems like you have, now we have a different priesthood, the mm. temple's in away with, so we, we have the heavenly temple and we go to our heavenly priest yeah. and obviously Messiah was the once and for all sacrifice, mm -hmm. but I don't see anything about holy days being done away with because of the new covenant. I'm talking about Galatians now. What do you think about physical circumcision? Is that binding on you? Well, I, thank God my mom had me circumcised. No, that's born, what it's medical. We're talking about a religious thing now. Talk about that. Yeah. That is absolutely required for everybody in Leviticus 19. You know that. Foreigners, everybody, to be in the covenant. Now, what do you say about it now? Are you going to require that people get physically circumcised for religious reasons? Yeah, circumcision, I, I honestly don't know that answer. Okay. I, I, don't, I haven't studied it out. Think, think about that. Paul said, let me give you Paul now. He's very radical. He says, if you get circumcised, don't do it. You'll have to keep the whole law. Don't do it. Would you sit down and tell us one week, what is this whole law which you shouldn't keep? That's Galatians 5.3. Whole law that goes with circumcision. What is that? Which you mustn't keep. Right. I, you know, I, being an Anabaptist, we're, yes. we're really into the, the words of Jesus. So I do understand that Jesus ah. uh, in the, in the Sermon on the Mount did yes. go, there were, there was a revised Torah. So I'm understanding of that. Yes. Good. But I don't see still where he's doing away with these, uh, with the Sabbath, especially when he has this young rich ruler ask him, uh, how can I gain eternal life? And, and Jesus says, you know, you know, the commandments and he mm -hmm. starts mentioning some of the 10. Right. I'm, I'm, I can't, seem to grasp that Jesus would uh, be doing away with the Sabbath within that statement, that he's okay. not including the Sabbath day. I see. If you stayed there, absolutely. But don't forget that Paul said, uh, Jesus said, there's a lot of stuff I can't tell you. I think Paul did with that. But my sticking point, you know, at the end of it, at the end of the day, I just don't think that in Colossians 2.16, he could be advocating any kind of Jewish calendar. I, don't, I cannot get beyond that. It seems so unnatural, especially Armstrong's attempt to get rid of that. He said, well, he's talking about the sacrifices on the Sabbath, not the Sabbath itself. Well, that's nonsense because you couldn't offer a sacrifice in Colossae anyway. And then he twisted the Greek. Watch out for amateur people in Greek.